If you've heard it once, you've heard it a thousand times. Audio is the most important part of any video. And if you have any doubts about the accuracy of that statement, consider this. How much of this video would you continue to watch if my dialogue were so low you couldn't hear what I was saying, or so loud and distorted that it sounded like crap? My guess is you'd click away pretty much immediately. Well, in this tutorial, you'll discover a couple of simple techniques you can start using right away to get and keep your dialogue in the sweet spot. I'm David Power, and this is a DaVinci Resolve Power Tip. Now, before we dive in, there are a couple of terms we need to clear up. The first is compression. In the video world, compression most often describes the process of taking large, high quality video files and turning them into slightly lower quality, but much smaller video files. To complicate things just a little more, we're also able to take lossless wave format audio files and compress them down to smaller, lower quality MP3s. But when I use the term compression in this tutorial, I'm referring to something very different. In the world of audio engineering, compression refers to the process of reducing the dynamic range of an audio signal. What complicates that definition is the fact it contains another video term, dynamic range. As a video expert, you know a camera's dynamic range refers to the number of gradations or stops of light its sensor can capture. Well, in terms of audio compression, dynamic range refers to the difference between a recording's loudest parts and its quietest parts. In the audio world, dynamic range is measured in decibels, or dBs. And in video editing and digital audio workstation, or DAW software, line-leveled signals range from minus infinity, or complete silence, to zero decibels, the level at which clipping begins. So audio compression is the process of reducing the volume of a recording's loudest parts while leaving the quieter parts unchanged. So why would you want to do that? Well, the simple answer is to make your dialogue easier for your audience to hear. Take a look at this waveform. On the left, we have some very quiet dialogue, and the blobs are very small top to bottom. And on the right, the blobs are larger, so they're much louder. One two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If we attempt to fix this by bumping up the gain on the clip, so the quiet parts are at a decent volume, suddenly the loud sections are clipping. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And clipping sounds terrible and unprofessional, so we can't have that. Now, one solution is to chop up your audio into separate clips and adjust the gain of each clip individually so they're all at a similar volume. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that is one technique some audio post-production pros use. But for non-critical work, it's definitely easier to apply compression to the entire audio track and have it magically do the volume leveling for you. Compression lets us raise the overall or average volume of our audio without the loudest parts clipping and distorting. And when the average volume is louder, all of your dialogue is easier for your audience to hear and understand. Now I wanna make one thing very clear. The goal of compression is not to make all of your dialogue the same volume, because that can sound very unnatural. There are times when you might need to do that, but that's not the goal of compression. The goal is to even out the highs and lows. That makes sense? Now, just one last side note. It's really, really important that you start with a high quality recording. If your original recording has a lot of noise in it, for example, hiss from microphone preamps, air conditioner rumble, fan noise, or any other distracting sounds, compression cannot fix those things. In fact, because we often use compression to boost quiet sounds, it can actually make a noisy recording sound even worse. Compression also can help you if your audio is clipped and has peaks at or above zero decibels. Now, there are tools and techniques you can use to reduce noise and fix clipping, but compression is not one of them. 
With those caveats out of the way, let's dive into step number one, filter the low end and high end. Ironically, the first step to good compression is not compression. It's EQ or equalization. We're going to use an EQ to remove the low frequency and high frequency sounds we don't need. Here's how you do that. Start by opening the Fairlight tab, then open the Mixer pane. Identify the track you want to compress. In my case, it's the one labeled Dialog, and click on the box next to the letters EQ to open the equalizer. Now, if you're not familiar with equalizers, this might look confusing, but don't sweat it. I got you. The blue line in the center here represents how and where the EQ is modifying our input signal. Right now, the line is perfectly flat along zero decibels, so it's not affecting our signal in any way. We're gonna do two quick things here. Number one, click on the band one button. This adds what's called a high pass filter to our equalizer. A high pass filter does exactly what its name suggests. It removes lower frequencies and lets higher frequencies pass through unchanged. Next, let's adjust the frequency of the high pass filter to about 100 Hertz. Why 100 Hertz? Two reasons. First, unless you're dealing with a baritone opera singer, there's very little useful vocal content below 100 Hertz. In that range, you're dealing with mostly thumps, bumps, rumbles, hums, and plosives. Plosives are the explosions of air from your mouth when you make a P sound. And second, lower frequency sounds have more energy than high frequency sounds, so they can trigger compressors unnecessarily. We can deal with both those issues by filtering anything below 100 Hertz. In fact, I recommend going higher if you can. If you're listening through a good sound system, move the frequency control up as high as 120 and play your audio back. As soon as the voice starts to sound tinny or unnatural in any way, lower the frequency until it doesn't. Next, click the band six button to add a low pass filter. Again here, as the name suggests, a low pass filter removes high frequencies and leaves lower frequencies unchanged. Adjust the low pass frequency to about 13,000 Hertz, again, because there's little to no useful vocal content above that frequency. Now, let me point out, some audio experts and even some non-experts will disagree with my frequency choices. They'll say 100 Hertz is too high for the high pass or that 13,000 is too low for the low pass. All I'll say in response is this, what I'm describing is my process and I've been using it successfully for many years. If there are frequencies that work better for your use case or for the gear you're working with, by all means, have at it. Dial in these frequencies so they work for you. What I'm giving you in this tutorial is a starting point. With that said, at this stage, it's a good idea to play your dialogue back and make sure it doesn't sound all that different than your pre-EQ'd version. Assuming it's good, let's move on to step number two, sort of a add a compressor. Now that we've removed the low frequency and high frequency content we don't care about, let's add a compressor. To do that, double click on the dynamics box in the mixer pane. Now there's a lot going on in this module. For right now, let's ignore the expander and gate section on the left. And let's also ignore the limiter section on the right. Here in the center, click the compressor label so it turns red. Notice the grid area now displays a yellow upward sloping line and a blue vertical line. These give you a visual representation of the threshold and ratio controls we're going to talk about next. First of all is the threshold. This determines the volume at which the compressor starts to compress. If the threshold is too high, let's say all the way at zero decibels, it will never affect your signal at all so you'll get no compression. And if it's too low, all the way down at minus 50 decibels, it will compress pretty much everything except silence. And unless you're going for a really extreme sound effect, that's often too much compression. All this is to say there's no one default threshold level that works in every situation. You have to set your threshold depending on the audio you're dealing with. We'll come back to threshold in a minute. For right now, let's set it to about minus 14. The other important control is the ratio. When an input signal exceeds the threshold level, ratio determines how much the signal gets reduced. At a ratio of two to one, the volume of any signal above the threshold gets divided by two or basically cut in half. 
At a ratio of 10 to 1, signals above the threshold get divided by 10 or reduced by 90%. The bottom line is, the higher the ratio value, the more the volume of your loudest audio gets reduced. The sidechain control here on the right is a more advanced topic, so we won't address that in this tutorial. Along the bottom row, there are three controls labeled attack, hold, and release. I won't go into those in detail. Just know they control how quickly the compressor starts compressing and stops compressing. And the default values are fine for our current purposes. Now, the $64,000 question is this. What are the proper values for threshold and ratio? And I'm afraid to say the only real answer is it depends because each audio recording is going to require slightly different values. But here are a few tips you can use to get started. First of all, the higher you set the ratio, the less natural your dialogue is going to sound. For most talking head or voiceover dialogue, 10 to 1 is too high. If you want your dialogue to sound as natural as possible, start with a ratio of 2 to 1. The next step is to set the threshold so the loudest parts of your audio are getting reduced by somewhere close to 3 decibels. How do you know how much it's getting reduced? You do that by watching the gain reduction meter right here. When your input signal is below the threshold, the gain reduction meter will be completely dark. And as soon as it rises above the threshold, you'll see a blue bar appear at the top of the meter. If you watch the length of the blue bar in relation to the marks here on the left, you can get a decent idea of how much your signal is being compressed. Touch point where Three decibels is roughly a third of the way between zero and minus 10. What I recommend is so looping the loudest they section they of your audio and slowly adjusting the threshold so the maximum gain reduction is close to three decibels. With this particular audio track, I'm getting a gain reduction of three decibels at a threshold value of approximately minus 25.6 decibels. Now, because I've just knocked the peaks down by three decibels, I'm going to adjust the makeup gain fader here on the right to raise the volume of the entire track by three decibels. Now think about what I've just done. I've used a compressor to reduce the loudest parts of the audio by three decibels, and I've used makeup gain to push everything up in volume by three decibels. So at the end of the day, my loudest parts are exactly where they were before I compressed them, but the quietest parts are now three decibels louder. Make sense? Now, for the record, by no means am I suggesting this is the only acceptable way to set up a compressor. But I think you're going to find a ratio of two to one, a gain reduction of three decibels, and a makeup gain of three decibels is a very solid starting point for dialogue in your video projects. And again, you can't hurt anything here except maybe your ears. So I encourage you to play with the ratio and threshold controls and find levels that work best for your situation. And when you're done, close the dynamics module, return to the edit tab and continue on with your edit. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, you know what to do. Once again, I'm David Power, and I'll see you in the next Power Tip.